Okay. So, uh, hello everybody, and uh, thank you uh, for your time. Uh, this is Ali, and uh, I'm really happy to be here at Great Besides Barcelona conference. And uh, today I'm going to talking about uh, some uh, aspects, security aspects of uh, Internet of Things, especially narrowband Internet of Things. Uh, based on uh, LT communication. So I think uh, it is interesting for you. And uh, so let me go into slide show. Okay. So first of all, this is Ellie and uh, as mentioned before, uh, I have almost nine years of experience in the different variety of security fields. Uh, and also I'm a regular speaker and trainer at many international conferences and re I really love to play with beats and bias and signal and radio. And uh, before start, uh, let me switch to shows, automatic show. Okay. Good. So if you're ready, let's get started. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, what is Internet of Things? Maybe most of you heard about. There are some uh, special components of Internet of Things, uh, like uh, some hardware. They are acting as sensors, uh, and also there are some middlewares and the APIs, maybe, and there there are some gateways as well as some integration with the web application and maybe mobile application uh, for management purposes. And uh, another thing is that uh, we may hear about Internet of Things and uh, such uh, technologies in different uh, businesses and purposes like industrial Internet of Things, which is very uh, interesting nowadays. Uh, the second one and one of the most critical one is healthcare. In healthcare, uh, actually healthcare industry, uh, taking advantage of Internet of Things as well as uh, all kinds of mobile communication and uh, actually telecom based infrastructure uh, actually for uh, connectivity, for better uh, connection speed and the less uh, delay and latency. And there are many medical devices and sensors all around the world acting as uh, Internet of Things a sensor. And um, the main advantage of Internet of Things is that connecting every sensors, every hardware and software together uh, with a great and portable and flexible management. So the next one is smart city. Uh, so uh, different uh, sections uh, act, uh, playing uh, critical roles uh, in smart city and uh, most of connection is based on internet of things. And also smart home, maybe you're facing with a smart home technologies, they're taking advantage of internet of things as well. And uh, other uh, irrelative industries like agriculture, uh, so there are many solutions uh, actually uh, working in agriculture based on Internet of Things and NB-IoT and narrowband Internet of Things as well. So, for example, uh, if we want to detect fire, we can take advantage of Internet of Things technologies or even uh, have better uh, actually uh, performance uh, and less uh, water wasting, we can take advantage of Internet of Things and NB-IoT in agriculture industry as well. So, uh, actually, uh, I want to uh, go deeper inside narrowband Internet of Things. So first of all, I want to talk about uh, another aspect called LTM or uh, actually uh, LT machine type communication or LTMTC. Uh, it's based on LP van technology um, developed by the International Standards uh, Organization, TGPP. And it's uh, enabled all kind of hardware and sensors, devices, uh, and equipment in the field of Internet of Things and related services for IoT uh, service and applications. 
So actually, uh, LCM uh, allows the reuse of LC installed based on a great coverage. And uh, what is NB-IoT, as I said before, it's narrowband IoT. It's uh, a radio-based technology uh, which set up over uh, cellular communication, which is uh, specially uh, prepared for indoor uh, coverage, uh, long battery life, uh, a, a great volume of equipment, uh, user equipments and devices with a low cost of uh, deployments. Actually, uh, NBIT limits bandwidth uh, to a single narrow band of approximately 200 kilohertz um, and offering a greater speeds of uh, actually 26 kilobytes in, re in 13 release of uh, the international standard 3GPP. And uh, there are some other uh, version of uh, MBIOT developed by 3GPP also. And uh, actually, uh, LTM and NB-IoT are together and they're uh, complementary solutions. So scientists and researchers think about that uh, Internet of Things is very useful for different kind of industry people and experts all around the world. So what is the better uh, solution to take advantage of this great technology? So. Uh, actually, the main issue in Internet of Things is the infrastructure and the network connection. So what is the best network connectivity all around the world with the greatest uh, coverage and less latency and delay with low cost? So absolutely, there it is uh, cellular-based communication or mobile network communication. So companies and uh, international organizations try to uh, integrate uh, Internet of Things with cellular communication, and it is um, right now it is MBIOT. It's based on a cellular communication, especially in fourth generation in LTE, and it's at, actually taking advantage of uh, a radio section or radio access network in LTE, which is called EUTRAN, evolved EUTRAN, and. Uh, there are many uh, advantages uh, between NB IoT and IoT because we have more uh, speed, more security feature. Uh, however, in this slide, in, in this presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about more about some uh, issues regarding NB IoT, especially as I mentioned before, because the infrastructure is based on LTE communication and radio-based communication in LTE generation. Uh, we are going deep to uh, review how a hacker and attacker uh, would take advantage of uh, some issues uh, to exploit and uh, what kind of vulnerabilities are in place in uh, this industry. So first of all, uh, I'm going uh, to have a little introduction about uh, privacy in LTE communication. Actually, uh, Um, so, uh, in, to be honest, uh, most of mobile operators use uh, some kind of dedicated spectrum bands uh, uh, under provision of license granted by their, uh, for example, national regulator or other organization. So, MNO or mobile network operator uh, provide co connectivity using a standard network technologies like UMTS, GSM, NLT, and 5G uh, nowadays. As uh, specified by some uh, global organization like 3GPP, uh, the two major uh, mobile IoT technologies, LTM and narrowband IoT, standards by 3GPP, uh, are, are founded by large number of mobile operator and supplier of equipment. Uh, actually. Uh, Allowing the ecosystem uh, to benefit from uh, economic of scale and low cost of development and deployment, you know, and the security specification of narrowband Internet of Things are close to uh, uh, those of standard uh, uh, standards in IoT, but uh, there are several variation. Uh, primarily with uh, regard to low energy IoT hardware, network connectivity, uh, etc. And uh, IoT terminal device typically 
has powerful processing capacity and a complex network communication protocol and a um, tire security reinforcement strategy. And typically, power consumption is high and regular charging is important. And low, low power IoT system, uh, on the other hand, are distinguished by uh, um, actually uh, vulnerabilities are more likely to pose a threat to terminals. Uh, in addition, um, actually, the state of denial of service, uh, denial of service attacks may be um, triggered by basic resource use. In comparison, um, actually, the number of low power consumption IoT terminal system, uh, I mean, is much higher in real implementation than in uh, conventional IoT, Internet of Things devices. So uh, actually, even greater security incidents will result from some minor security risk. And uh, NB IoT is centralized system such as LTE, where uh, base station, actually we call base station in LTE, called, we call it uh, in ODB, manage both uh, uplink and downlink scheduling um, to ensure the synchronization of resources between systems. Uh, and as you can see, a uh, billion of connected devices can, and subscribers, user, user equipment uh, connecting to the base station to take advantage of uh, LT infrastructure, and they are acting as NBIOT sensors. And so uh, to be conclude, uh, actually, this infrastructure uh, is uh, some kind of critical infrastructure in, or critical industry. So, actually, here we have example, but before that, I want to a little uh, talk about the example and the uh, security aspect in this slide. So, um, actually, uh, searchers can uh, impersonate cell phone users by, uh, as you know, leveraging a flaw in the mobile communication protocol in LTE, or maybe in traditional technologies like SS7 uh, in past uh, generation like GSM and 3G. Therefore, through the cell phone bill, uh, they will look fee-based service under their name and are paid for. For example, an attacker may book facilities, stream screens, but the owner of the attack phone would have to pay for them. You know, uh, actually, there are some other kind of tax uh, regarding uh, the, the infrastructure, the telecom infrastructure, as well as eavesdropping, denial of service, uh, actual location tracking, uh, etc. So, and now in this case, due to the existing of vulnerabilities and extensive security hold, actually privacy, security, uh, and design authentication processes in mobile networks. So the design, uh, actually the design and implementation of these algorithms in uh, the third and fourth generation LTE uh, has been greatly improved uh, than GSM technology. So uh, actually there is an advanced mutual authentication mechanism and encryption as well in LTE network. And this has reduced security risk, but it should be noted that security concerns uh, actually have not yet been fully addressed. And reasons for this include the vulnerability of this technology to attacks such as, uh, as I said, location tracking, fake BTS, and LT fake InnoDB implementation or rogue InnoDB using protocol exploitation. And based on the research and experiment performed uh, as uh, based on this example, uh, actually, uh, uh, on a it's it's somehow a real networker in a test bed. It's possible to perform this kind of uh, research and experiment. Uh, actually, which performed in LT protocol, especially in access layer in radio access network, and. Actually, you can see uh, you, I used a radio capture in LTU to run without any special access to the network. And, and this protocol, uh, despite security mechanisms such as encryption and mutual authentication, is vulnerable to protocol exploitation and set up a fake uh, basis station or Rogo in ODB. Uh, an attacker can use uh, this to sniff on traffic with a SIM card or software-defined radio or SDR. So, 
actually a number of exploits are uh, found and introduced based on open source version of LTS stack, open LTE, as I mentioned, and mainly focused on the LTS stack open source implementation analysis is uh, actually given on the growth of low cost indicator and uh, exploits that trigger blocking of mobile devices, which were first introduced globally uh, in many events and uh, uh, research communities. And so all traffic and data collected uh, and captured by uh, USRP B2010 uh, and baseband by using uh, these features, uh, we will be able to capture and analyze data in physical layer, as you can see based on the Wireshark results in this slide, such as uh, receiving real-time information and decoding the non-access stratum, uh, R super code, and system messages in NLT. And the information gathered during uh, the research is collected from a real uh, uh, actually function, which I emulated in uh, open source environment. And the sniffer system acted as IMSI catcher in this research and captured the IMSI number, which is the most valuable information and it is unique for every mobile subscriber all around the world. So uh, it's something like a, a static uh, IP address, which is unique for you. So this is important for a hacker or an attacker to have your uh, static and uh, permanent address. So IMSI is acting like that. So it is very important. And uh, actually we capture the IMSI of active subscribers uh, or maybe emulated subscribers in the area. And uh, the analysis was performed with OpenLT uh, and SRSLT as well software in order to listen to traffic and implement in you know, be uh, actually in emulation environment. And all the data exchange between the user equipment, uh, I mean that the mobile phone and the base station is intercepted, but only uh, uh, actually uh, control plane traffic actually that includes signaling data is important to us. And uh, this section examines the exploitation of the LT protocol using the analysis of the collected signaling data. And a number of security aspects and abuse of LT protocol uh, mentioned before, and the most uh, spotlight of which that are extraction of information from MIB and SIB messages, and the denial of service attack or DOS and location tracking using the implementation of Rogo in OTP. And this, um, um, simplifies the user equipment initial access protocol. And uh, so, but it could potentially be leveraged by an attacker to create, for example, sophisticated jamming attacks, customized configuration of a Rubo based station or uh, tuning other sophisticated attack and complex attacking scenarios. So based on the pictures here, uh, there are some contents of MIB and SIB messages in Wireshark transmitted by a commercial eNodeB uh, in my test area. From the information extracted from these messages, an attacker can discover the mobile operator that operates that cell. The tracking area code receive power threshold to trigger a handoff and adjust cell, and a series of configuration data could be influenced to set up a fake-based station. So, and one of the most valuable segment of information from the protocol is exploit point of view, uh, actually is the list of uh, high priority frequencies. Uh, these parameters can be configured on a regular you know, to be uh, to activate most user equipment and mobile phones to attach to uh, that malicious base station. In addition, uh, an attacker can also extract mapping of important control channels on a physical layer uh, from the SIB messages. Uh, this can be leveraged to con configure a smart jammer. So, and also OpenLT provides a traffic log feature can be executed to passively scan broadcast information from the nearby base station. A low cost alternative can be implemented on RTL SDR a radio running um, the LTE cell scanner tools. So actually, uh, based on pictures, neighbor cells that successfully detected by tool and the decoded information of both MIB and SIB messages can be shown here. 
And uh, here, TMZ catcher, and uh, actually, in order to implement and exploit this attack, um, it is necessary to capture subscriber MZ on air. Uh, so interesting. The point here uh, is that that low volume of MZ values is exchanged between user equipment and the network due to its very high importance. As I mentioned before, about the importance of IMC number, and sometimes this exchange uh, supervenes under some situations, as uh, when the sending attach network, as you can see here at that stage, actually a mobile phone uh, or user equipment sends the IMC uh, before authentication and NAS protocol, which handling authentication and other related procedures. And now the attacker disconnect the subscriber and implement a regular inotb or fake one, so that all subscribers in that specific area send their IMC number toward the attack station. So uh, it, that's great. A regular inotb is a fake base station that is illegally set up uh, on the LT network and operated by a hacker or an attacker via uh, open source software framework uh, which are widely available on the internet. And based on the picture, uh, simple subscriber attached request in Wireshark uh, can be seen. And the subscriber has sent attached request message along with a related clear text IMSI number uh, to authenticate and complete the connection process to the network. So if Rugo InnoDB uh, has been set up with a required InnoDB network parameter, the attacker can now launch uh, potential serious threat such as man in the middle attacks, denial of service, add malicious messages or inject uh, some kind of malicious messages to the attachment process or deny user equipment, mobile service and downgrade to a non-LTE network. So this, uh, the the MBIOT sensor will, will then downgrade to a, a non LT like UMTS and 2G, which is a great uh, environment for a hacker. Moreover, denial of service attack uh, actually that may lead to network failure or downgrading to non LT uh, network or uh, refusing all network access. So okay, I'm going more fast. And the exploitation, actually, uh, based on uh, my previous uh, explanation, here uh, is another exploitation. It's some kind of active exploitation. And the hacker trying to actually play the TAU or traffic area update reject message, which require no security keys. And the Rugo InnoDB could target any LTE mobile user in its area for provisional denial of service. It doesn't matter. It's an NBT, uh, NBIoT sensor or a real subscriber, you know. Uh, and a similar thread is also possible for service reject or attach re reject request messages, actually, or requests and responses in the network. Uh, whenever the uh, user equipment transmit a TAU request message to a Rugo InnoDB, it would be still be actually associated to the real network. And this message is also integrity protected, but not encrypted under the NAS security context. And this will be a, uh, an opportunity for attacker who could easily decode and send respond with a TAU reject message. And um, so, uh, and that does not require the integrity enforcement as well. So actually, based on the picture, the user equipment and NBIT sensor actually will accept the reject cause and continue to act further by deleting all existing service connected to the actual network. And in addition, TAU attached requests will not be searched for, uh, for or sent by the user equipment or sensor to any nearby legitimate LTE network, uh, causing temporary denial of service uh, with less effect. And uh, as you can see, some other kind of uh, similar attacks and vulnerability are possible in uh, LT network. And right now, due to lack of time, uh, uh, I should uh, uh, go in for conclusion. And uh, I think my time is over right now. And thank you, everybody, uh, for your time. Thank you. Besides, uh, have a nice day. If there is any question, I'm here to answer questions. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ali.
Uh, yeah, let's wait. Uh, we're a little bit over time. Let's wait a couple of minutes. If someone from the audience here in Zoom or someone in the YouTube channel wants to write us a question. Um, I may have a question, actually. Um, again, this is not my area of expertise. So it was really interesting. And I know there is a huge, like, there is a word, right, behind that. Uh, but then a question. Is it possible? Would it be possible to... Yes. Apologies to um, detect an I I S M an I M C uh, catcher. Yeah, I MC. I MC. Yeah. And it would be possible. I mean, me as as a user of a device, could I have like an app or something that say, hey, so I mean, be careful. There is someone that's catching these things. Is it yeah. possible? Yes, actually, uh, there are many incidents uh, uh, on the news that uh, maybe. Uh, some organization found IMSI catcher devices because there are many commercial IMSI catcher devices all around the world uh, and uh, for different purposes. But it is possible to build and run your own IMSI catcher based on open source tools and you need some kind of a platform and uh, to actually emulate this stack like OpenLT, SRSLT and uh, software defined radio like USRP, or Blade.rf, HackRF, or RTLSDR, uh, whenever you want to uh, focus on a specific uh, cellular network generation, it's different to use uh, which one, uh, which kind of actually SDR you want to use. It's based on the specification and your requirements. And on, on, and on the user side, uh, so let's say uh, I have like, you know, can I detect if someone has created an MC catcher? I mean, do I know uh, if someone actually? Is <laughs> it, it's really, it's it's really tough because uh, we we as a subscriber, normal subscribers, cannot detect the MC catcher or Rugo in be in a different network. However, mobile network owner and operator all around the world uh, facing with this kind of issues, they cannot detect uh, such uh, issues and fake base station, but. Uh, some groups and also uh, me uh, worked on some solutions to detect uh, fake stations based on some uh, behavior analysis and machine learning algorithms uh, to detect a fake base station in early stages. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so we don't have questions so far, but I would love if you can send these research documents in the uh, hallway chat uh in, in slack right because i definitely want to zoom in and and look at the uh, at the data um we don't have any question now here so if someone has any questions you can just go in slack uh, sagrada familia channel or the hallway channel you can write those questions there um uh, ali and myself making sure that those are addressed um again thank you very much ali and thanks for joining us it was really interesting thank you